welcome. Jared here from soundguitarlessons.com. This lesson is a neo soul style guitar lesson. We're going to learn what I just played at the intro there. I'm going to walk you through all of these voicings that I play that are actually all voicings of the exact same chord. I recently published a video on this same topic, neo soul guitar chord voicings, neo soul style sounding guitar shapes uh, in various places, but all representing one chord type. And in that video, I'll put a link in the description to that for you so you can check it out. We did uh, seven different voicings that work over E flat major seven. Well, I got a request to do more of these types of videos with other chord types. So we're doing minor seven this time, and you can really just think of it as minor. We're going to play a bunch of stuff that all represents a C minor chord. So everything I played in the intro is all just C minor, or you can think of it as specifically as C minor seven. So we did seven voicings in the previous video on the Neo Soul guitar style video. This one, we're going to up the game. We're going to do 14 voicings of C minor seven, doing it in that style that I played in the intro. And I'm just gonna walk you through in order exactly how I played it so you can check out how cool they sound for yourself. Feel free to grab your guitar and follow along. I'm gonna show you the shapes for each chord as we go through them. The first one is C minor nine. This is the five on the bottom, the flat three, the flat seven, and the nine. So this is a rootless voicing, and taking away the root and replacing it with something colorful is a great way to get a richer sounding chord, especially if you're moving through voicings quickly. It's really not bad at all to replace the root. So I like this five on the bottom. The next voicing is one of my all-time favorites. This voicing has flat seven on the bottom, and this is five of C minor, and this is nine of C minor, and then we have flat three. This is gorgeous because we have a half step on the top between nine and flat three. Just absolutely beautiful. And then the third shape I'm going to is the classic stable root position, most common voicing of minor seven that you might find on the guitar that's not an open string voicing. Just root, fifth, flat seven, and flat third. So what I did with these first three voicings is I'm moving with the bass line to, to be something that sounds melodic. So I'm either going to be doing something on the top or on the bottom to make it sound like it's moving in a melodic way. Okay, so when I get to this voicing, uh, this neo soul sound, which, you know, what does it really mean to be neo soul? Well, my personal interpretation of it is that it is usually rich and extended jazz chord voicings played in a genre that is played more with a groove, not like a swing feel in jazz, but more like a groove or a beat. Like lo fi hip hop uses these same kinds of chords. Neo soul is going to be more kind of. R&B groove uh, playing over beats or hip hop beats or something like that. But a big part of the flavor of this sound is adding in ornamentations, specifically slurs or trills on the tops of these chords where you can. So I call this a non-static chord shape where we have just a chord shape and then things you can move around where I'm putting a whole step up above the top note on the second string and then lifting off that middle finger to bar this second string. Now, I'm not considering those separate voicings. Of course, they are chord shapes, but every single voicing that I'm considering a, a actual uh, static real voicing of minor seven is going to include the flat seven and the three. Whether it includes the root of the five can be, can kind of give or take, you can, those can be replaced by other things, but the flat seven and the three are going to be in all of these to hold down the essence of the sound of minor seven. I have a video about shell voicings that talks about how that seven and three, those chord tones are crucial for the sound of uh, any chord. Those are the, the essence of every uh, seventh chord and every jazz chord. I'll put a link in the description to that video. But uh, so these I'm just considering ornamentation and not really their own voicings. Uh, and that might just be like a picky notion, but I like to kind of have a system behind it. So, so that's what I did there. Okay, so we have three chord shapes and this one has kind of movable, um, non-static ornamentation embellishment notes. Great, well now I'm gonna jump, oh, and I like to do this kind of Jimi Hendrix slide kind of thing. So going up to here, just kind of walking through the arrangement that I did there. So this voicing 
just a classic inversion of C minor seven, where it's flat three, flat seven, root, and five. Just a standard inversion of the one, three, five, seven, uh, in a different order of C minor seven. Cool, so that's definitely one of them. Now, I took away that top note and barred instead on fret 13 there. And that's a gorgeous C minor 11 voicing. The five was the top note, and instead it's getting replaced by the 11, which is totally good to take the five away to replace it with something else in any voicing when we're talking uh, jazz chords, seventh chords, this kind of rich sound that we're after. So we have, here's another voicing with the five on top. Here's another voicing that's the C minor 11. Those both count as separate voicings. Let's move on. This voicing, we used exactly this in the other Neo Soul guitar chords video. If you watch that, this is exactly one of the voicings, uh, except we're interpreting it differently. Now this is C minor 11. Here's the root, the 11, the flat seven, and the flat three. I absolutely love this one. Now this one has a embellishment note on top, but I don't wanna consider this its own voicing. It's a little too bold sounding. It doubles the 11. So now the, the 11 is in there twice and we took away the flat three if you do that. So I'm not really thinking of it as its own. I'm just using that embellishment sound, which really is kind of a quintessential element of this Neo Soul guitar sound, uh, in my opinion. Again, just based on listening to it, it's, it's all over the place and really does add kind of that modern flavor to these chords that uh, sounds very, very cool and very um, relevant and works over these groove beats and whatnot. Uh, now we're gonna do the same thing with this very typical C minor seven voicing that is just top four strings, all one fret. Well, here's a very standard root position voicing of C minor seven. We're not even gonna be using this one, but if you take that low note, move it on the top, that's this voicing. This is flat seven, then flat three, then five, and then the root. Cool, well, we're just replacing the root with nine for one of those voicings. So this is C minor nine without the root. Totally awesome, colorful, beautiful voicing. And then also C minor seven. Great, here's where it gets even more interesting. We're gonna jump to this voicing. Well, this is a root position F seven sus, F dominant seven sus four. But that also is C minor 11, because this bottom note is the 11. If you're considering C the root, this bottom note is the 11. This is C, this is flat three, this is flat seven. And flat three and flat seven need to be in there for it to be what we need. This is just a, if you'd move that bottom note up a whole step, you get just a an inversion of C minor seven. So it's just replacing the five with the 11, just like we did over here. Okay, so I love this voicing as an interpretation of, uh, of a minor chord. Um, so I'm using that. The next voicing is just all four middle strings on fret eight here. Now this is also C minor 11. This is minor, this is the 11. This is the flat seven. This is the flat three. And this is the five. Great. And then one of my favorite C minor 11 or just minor 11 voicings, very kind of most common minor 11 voicing probably. The root, the flat seven, the flat three, and the 11 on top. I love that once again, like that other one that I was mentioning over here. That is a half step on top. This has a whole step on top. When you have those whole steps or half steps on a guitar chord, it's just a, a gorgeous thing to be able to access since we we don't, we can't easily make any two notes sit next to each other. So when we can, um, it's, it's beautiful. And after that, I go to this voicing here, which the standard interpretation of that shape would be an E flat six, nine chord, especially if I include all of those notes. But as C minor, it's C minor 11. This voicing that we just had done, that top note, top E, well, if you just move it down here, it's the same thing with that high note down below. So now this is the flat three, this is the root, this is the 11, and this is the flat seven. Cool, two more chords here, and then I'll play through all of them slowly in the kind of arrangement that I played at the beginning. Ah, this one is beautiful. This is a very open sound. This is an add nine chord, major add nine, um, when this is the root. And this is kind of a typical shape for major add nine. This would be E flat major add nine. Um, I did a video recently about 
the theory of ad chords, what are they, with a bunch of ad nine chords and other types of ad chords. Check that out. I'll put a link in the description. But in this case, we're interpreting it as C minor seven. The question is, does it have the flat three and the flat seven in it? Here's flat three of C. This is flat seven of C. Cool. This is the five. And then this is the 11. So we're, at, we're adding the 11 to a lot of these, which is beautiful. A beautiful thing to add to a minor chord or a minor seven chord. Um, great. And then after that, the final chord, we're just going over here. Well, I added a bass line just to go flat seven, one, and kind of resolve. Uh, this is the root, flat three, flat seven, nine. And this is just a standard, if you looked up what is a minor nine shape, this is the most common one that would come up. It's obviously very similar to when we played this very first chord where the five is on the bottom. Sure, those are two separate voicings, absolutely. This one has the root on the bottom, this one has the five on the bottom. One of them is rootless, one of them is missing the five, which is fine to kind of play around with with those as long as those essential qualities are in there. So let's go through all of them again, like we did at the beginning. Okay, I'll kind of do it slowly. How many chords is that? I think it should be 14. One, two, three, and you have these embellishments, but that's still just three. Um, and then four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, and fourteen. And I just happened to put them in that order. You can play around with those in any order, start to improvise. I just made a little fun arrangement that I thought sounded good. That, and it comes from improvising. Uh, usually improvising and composing, when we're getting used to improvising, we are composing on the spot. And if our interest is in actually composing, improvising is uh, hugely beneficial for that because we'll find new ideas much quicker and make a lot of progress uh, much faster. So if you want to learn more about playing jazz chords, definitely download my any jazz chord booklet. It's a really awesome methodology and uh, system for being able to play any jazz chord with as few as eight shapes. And it gives you two different places on the guitar to play literally any jazz chord that comes up. So if you're interested in playing through and having at least something you can access very quickly to play uh, chords over jazz tunes, uh, check out that booklet. There's a link in the top of the description, or you can go to soundguitarlessons.com slash any jazz chord if you like that sound. That is the shell voicing approach where we are playing just the essential part of the chords. And if we understand that we can access those, we can much more easily start to get colorful with adding uh, creativity and all of these other voicings. So if we learn all of these voicings, that is fantastic. That's what I want you to do in this video. And then if we also know the seed that they all come from, then it's very, very powerful. So anyway, it's it's a great uh, little booklet and method. So definitely check that out. I post a video every Tuesday and I'll be back next week. See you then. And thank you so much. Mm -hmm.